Welcome back everybody. We're on to episode four where we're gonna go over clearancing for my steering rack, the mounts for the steering rack, the lower control arm, and my brake pedal assembly. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, if you can, hit the like button. And if you want, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll make sure you don't miss a single one of these build videos we have coming up over the next couple of months. So as you can see, we've got it a little stripped down from where it was in the last video. We've taken off the side pods, the tunnels, the engine tray, and all the bodywork just so we can get better access to the front of the car. So from here, you can see that this is just one piece of carbon, but we need to put a pretty large hole here for my steering rack and a smaller hole back here for my lower control arm. That tied in with the actual holes we need to drill down from the center of the car for my steering rack and my brake pedal assembly. But the other thing we've got to consider is the mounts for the end of the steering rack. But conveniently, if I get my job done just right, that should also work with my inch and a half inch hole saw. So the center point for the rod for the steering rack is an inch and a quarter above the flange surface. So what we're going to do is see if we can replicate that and mark that on my floor. So now that we've got marks for the center hole, I'm gonna go for a pilot hole just to see how close I am. From there, we're gonna step it up to the inch and a half inch hole saw. So we've got this inch and a half hole right where we need it to be, but it just left us with barely nothing on the top here. So what we're gonna end up doing is actually making this a channel rather than a hole, and that will get rid of the splintering possibility so now we're gonna locate the lower control arm bolt hole, but from there, I'm not sure how to get that one done. So we're gonna figure it out as we go. So now that I've got the steering rack holes punched through, I've got the location for the lower control arm bolt holes marked. I'm gonna go ahead and use my yellow paint with my Q-tip to dab down from the holes from the top. So we've got the holes for the steering rack here. We've marked for the lower control arm. We've also marked for the brake pedal assembly holes and the steering rack mounting holes. So what we unfortunately are gonna do next is pull off this lower floor. Now, if I was just needing to punch those holes, I'd find a way to do it. But we're also gonna need to take the step of bonding on and pop riveting on a carbon fiber panel on the front of my store here. So that is gonna require this floor coming off at some point. So we might as well just do that now. So for both the lower control arm and the steering rack, we're using a 3 8 bolt. What that means is we need a 5 8 hole or a little bit bigger in order to clear the head of the bolt or the nut of the bolt. So we're gonna drill that now. So when I was measuring the lower control arm pickup point, I noticed something. And that's the fact that the overall height of this fastener is inch and a quarter and the width here is an inch and a half. So I just decided I'm gonna use my inch and a half hole saw again. So now that we've got all the holes on the center section of my floor, we're gonna put that to the side because as I mentioned, we've gotta make sure that we get these panels put on. But first, we've gotta make them. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. 
So we jump back over to my dad's hobby shop because he has everything I need to make this replacement panel. Now, we're replacing this panel because we had to take it off to convert to the inboard dampers or the inboard front suspension. So taking it off, it was bonded onto my car, so it properly destroyed the edge that we would be bonding back onto my car. So we don't want to reuse this part. That tied in with the fact that there's holes where we don't need them means that this part is no good other than using it as a template. So we're going to put it aside and use it as a template for all the holes, the reliefs, and all the pop rivet holes later. What we had to start with is obviously a working surface, and we used a retired coffee table, or at least the piece of glass from that coffee table, as the bottom portion of our mold. We also had to start by putting on a little bit of mold release. So that's what this is, and that's what got us to the point where we started this little montage video you're gonna start seeing right now. So at this point, the mold release is on the glass, and we're adding the two-part epoxy to the glass itself. Now that's just gonna make sure that that certain side of the carbon is gonna be wet when we put down that first layer. So now that we put down that first piece of carbon, you can see that we're pouring a little bit more resin on the back. We're also gonna be using Bondo spreaders as a way to force the resin down through the carbon, just making sure that both sides of it are getting an ample amount of the resin. From there, you're gonna see that we're putting on the Kevlar piece. That's that yellow portion. That's gonna be the layer we sandwich between the two layers of carbon and will hopefully afford me a little bit of extra protection from anything getting through into my body. So next we're using that final piece of carbon. So now what we'll end up with is a carbon Kevlar carbon sandwich. And what we'll do is we'll just wet that So now because we're vacuum bagging, we want to use a little separation film. And that's what this little white layer is. It's called peel ply. Peel ply allows us to breathe into the part and pull the vacuum down on it. But once the resin dries, this is a separation barrier that will be able to peel off the part. So the last piece we put on before putting the bag on is this breather or kind of bleeding fabric. This is gonna allow us to pull the vacuum from the entirety of the part, not just the area local to where we actually have the vacuum fitting entering the part. So now we're laying out the double-sided tape, and this is gonna allow us to seal the bag to the glass. So lastly, we get to put the bag over the top. Now when we put the bag over the top, we started at the hose end just to make sure that we've worked the seal around the hose all the way. And we work it out from that edge and make sure we're forcing it down as much as possible. You can also see that we added a little bit of the bleeder cloth to the end of the hose itself. So we ran the vacuum pump for about two hours, but we let the part rest for a full day. And when we were done, we ended up with this. Now this is the side that was down towards the glass and it turned out to be beautiful. So this will be the outside of our part. The inside doesn't have that glossy finish, but it still completely got the resin throughout the entire part. So now what we get to do is take this piece and use our old piece as a template and we get to make this exactly like this. So with all the tools my dad had, we got these panels roughed in pretty good. Using the bandsaw to cut the perimeter, using the multiple different 
drills and hole saws and again using the bandsaw to cut these reliefs we're at the point where we've got a pretty good part on us so what i wanted to do was drill out these pop rivets and test fit the panel onto the car and that's what we're going to do next So we used pop rivets to hold the two panels together because my dad didn't have any of these. These are Clico clamps and we're going to use these to temporarily hold on the panel rather than pop riveting it on. So I'm really happy with how the panel fits using the Clico clamps. Obviously, we still have cleaning up to do around here and around the holes because we've drilled through it. But if I tidy up those holes, everything should look beautiful. We've just got to put the rest of the pop rivet holes in and we should be ready to go. We've successfully test fitted both our left and right side panels and they fit beautifully. But we do have one problem still and that's the fact that this bar right here is new. So we don't actually have pop rivet holes for that. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those out and drill those now. And once we're done with that, we're gonna get a sanding disc and kind of clean up some of these edges right here. Make them nice and pretty. So this is about where we've got to stop this video. We've got our pop rivet holes in the panel, but we've got to drill them through. We've done the best we can to deburr, but I think I've got to come up with something a bit more clever to get rid of these frays of Kevlar. The real reason we're stopping though, is we have to properly locate where the push rod's gonna come out of this panel and the panel on the other side. And I'm gonna have my buddy Kevin come over and we're gonna do a little bit of figuring that out. But for now, if you can hit the subscribe button and if you enjoyed watching the video, also hit the like button. For now, you have a great night and we'll see you in the next video.